when we talk about spring boot you might often hear people saying that spring boot is kind of a magic if you simply add some starters and run your application it will automatically works and we don't know what is going on things like that so basically all that magic is nothing but spring boots auto configuration mechanism so in this video i am going to talk about what is auto configuration and how it actually works and we might see a few examples of how this auto configuration is used within the spring boot framework so let's get started before talking about spring boots auto configuration mechanism first let us take a quick look at how the spring based application development look like before spring boot so that we will understand what spring boot is bringing in and how it is simplifying the application development so here i have written a blog post with title why spring boot a long time ago uh, describing how the uh, spring based application development looks like before spring boot and after spring boot okay so let us quickly walk through it so one of the benefit spring boot is bringing in is dependency management like before spring boot we used to configure all the libraries like what is the spring mvc we want to use and what is the spring data jpa we want to use and we need to figure out which version of spring mvc is compatible uh, with other libraries like uh, jackson and if you are using spring data jpa we need to identify what version of spring data jpa is compatible with uh, let us say we are using hibernate right we need to identify which hibernate version is compatible with which version of uh, spring data jpa so it is kind of a very uh, painful process and with spring boots starters this is all taken care we have a uh, parent palm and where all the compatible versions are defined and you simply need to add a starter and automatically all those compatible libraries and most commonly used libraries are already added to your application class path so this is one of the benefit uh, spring boot is bringing in and the next major benefit is auto configuration right so before spring boot we used to configure every aspect of the application explicitly for example i want to uh, store my application configuration in application.properties file in the class path but i need to explicitly configure saying that okay this is how we used to tell uh, the application that we want to store our configuration in application properties file using at property source and also we need to define this property sources placeholder configurer bin okay next let us take a look at how we need to configure all this database related stuff so here we need to register a data source bin and then we need to register uh, a data source initializer if you want to initialize the database by executing some sql file and we want to register hibernate exception translator so that it will translate hibernate exceptions into spring uh, exceptions and then we need to register this local container entity manager factory bin and also to enable transaction management we need to register this platform uh, transaction manager bin things like this so for uh, any spring data jpa hibernate based application like this we need to configure a lot of things explicitly but if you take a look at uh, today's spring boot based application development we don't have to do all these things this is all taken care and all this is happening because of the auto configuration mechanism let us talk about what is auto configuration instead of developer having to configure every aspect of the application explicitly spring boot follows convention over configuration based approach where if you follow certain conventions you don't need to configure everything explicitly and you need to configure only if you are deviating from the default conventions so that way it will drastically simplify the need for more configuration for example if we are configuring our application uh, properties in application.properties file we don't need to explicitly configure like this spring boot automatically load from uh, application.properties file from the class path and automatically register those pins whatever is required 
So you don't need to explicitly configure like this. Similarly, if you are adding a, uh, a Spring Boot web starter, it will automatically assume that you are going to build a web application or a REST API and automatically adds Tomcat as a servlet container because that is the most widely used uh, servlet container and automatically register the required web layer beans so that you don't have to explicitly configure all of those beans. And it also provides some customization features. For example, in most of the applications, uh, we are good to go with the defaults because they are very commonly used to defaults. But for whatever reason, we may want to configure or customize those defaults. So Spring Boot also provides that customization uh, feature as well. For example, by default, when we add uh, Spring Boot Web Starter, it will automatically use Tomcat and start the application on port 8080. But for whatever reason, if you want to change that port, you can uh, configure server.port equal to maybe 9090 and it will run on a diff different port. So like that, it provides all the uh, default configuration and also provides the ability to customize the defaults. So with this mechanism, now building the same spring based applications with spring boot becomes very easy because all this repetitive boilerplate code you no need to write anymore all this configuration is taken care by auto configuration mechanism in order to understand auto configuration mechanism in more practical terms let us explore how spring boots data source auto configuration works okay Let's imagine we are creating a Spring Boot based application using Spring Data JPA, H2 and PostgreSQL starters. Okay, so if we try to start this application, Spring Boot will try to register data source bin by following these attempts. First, it will try to see use explicitly registered bin if defined. For example, once we generated the application, if we registered a data source bin like this, it will use this data source pin because whatever we explicitly define always takes the highest priority. Okay. Assume if we do not define any such pin in our application, then it will go on try to see the next alternative approach. Use properties from application.properties file. So what next attempt Spring Boot do is it will go on see is there any JDBC properties configured in application at properties file. If we have configured something like this, it will try to create a data source bin using these property values and automatically create a uh, data source bin. Okay. Assume we have not configured these properties as well. So in that case, as a last attempt, Spring Boot tries to see if you have any embedded database driver in your application class path. In our case, we have added H2, right? So what Spring Boot will do, it will try to create a data source pin using in-memory settings and automatically register the data source pin. So like this, it will attempt to register automatically uh, various beans based on various criteria, always taking your explicit configuration as the highest priority. If you notice, Spring Boot's auto configuration mechanism works by conditionally registering the beans. For example, in the case of data source, if there is a data source bean explicitly uh, configured, then there is no auto configuration again. It will use whatever is explicitly registered. If not, and the auto configuration mechanism kicks in and then it will try to see various criteria like are there uh, data source properties configured in the application.properties file. Then if that criteria is met, then it will try to create a auto uh, uh, data source bin automatically. If not, then again another condition where it will check for is there any um, embedded database supporting driver available in the class path then it will uh, check the criteria and if it met then it will automatically try to register a data source pin automatically so basically it all boils down to it checks for various criteria and then conditionally register if there is no such bin already registered okay so how does spring boot uh, does this conditional registration 
using various approaches that is built into Spring Boot. These are some of the approaches Spring Boot uses to auto configure beans based on various conditions. For example, let us uh, take a look at this add conditional on class. So here, if you take a look at this class, this is nothing but a, a Spring configuration class. And here you can see this annotation at conditional on class some service start class. So what happens is when a Spring Boot checks if your application has a class some service in your class path, then only it will go ahead and register this pin. Okay. And again, not only this conditional on class is satisfied, it should also satisfy this conditional on missing pin. What does this do? So it will uh, check for first this some service class should be on the class path and also there is no already registered bean of type some service. Only if the uh, some service bean is missing then only Spring Boot is going to go ahead and register this bean automatically. So like this various conditions work together and automatically register the beans conditionally. So another uh, such an example is conditional on property. For example, in our data source example, we talked about whether um, if we have data source properties in our uh, properties file, then it will automatically register, right? So similarly here, we can configure certain property like app.version equals to 2.2 then only you want to register some pins so here the criteria is it will check for certain property in the environment and then you are checking whether if it has certain value then only register the pins so like this there are various such conditional annotations that spring boot internally uses to register the pins automatically so if we take a look at this one of the auto configuration classes. So here we, we are looking at data source auto configuration class. So here you can see there are a lot of such conditional annotations that it is uh, using to check. So here it is checking conditional on class. So if your application has this data source and embedded database type, then only it is going to uh, check further within this uh, configuration class to register the pins. Again here it is checking for um, conditional on missing pin. That means if you have already registered a data source pin, it is not going to go ahead and create an embedded uh, data source. Okay, so like that. Spring Boot internally uses various such conditional annotations to determine if there is any bean exist or not. If it is missing, then only auto configure some bean, something like that. Okay. So based on this concept, internally it will check for various properties and then automatically configure the beans. If you want to learn more about how these conditional annotations work, I would highly recommend you to go through this how Spring Boot auto configuration magic works blog post. In this article I have explained how we can register beans conditionally and also how we can create our own conditions to check for existence of a class, existence of a certain property or a system property and things like that. So I highly recommend you to go through this article to gain more understanding of how this conditional bean registration works. I will share the links for this why Spring Boot article and how Spring Boot auto configuration magic works article in the video description and I highly recommend you to uh, go through these two articles to gain more proper understanding of how Spring Boot auto configuration works. So I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching. Bye bye.